Hey, welcome back to Metal Shop Steve. I am Steve. Uh, it's been a while since we talked about an album. Uh, when I started out doing this channel, I was doing a couple of album reviews, and I think, uh, at least at the moment, I'm going to keep the album reviews to my favorite albums, um, just, you know, kind of as a way for me to talk about some of the stuff that I really like. Uh, in the future, I'm happy to do album reviews for stuff that you request. Um, so, if you have something you want me to take a listen to and talk about because you think it will be uh, fun, you want to hear my take on it, or you just want to throw me a curveball and see what I have to say about an album. Um, at any rate, today we are talking about Dr. Feelgood by Motley Crue. Um, and I guess we'll say that Motley Crue has kind of been a hot topic lately because of the film The Dirt, based on the book The Dirt. Um, so here we are, uh, we're going to talk about the album. I'm talking about Dr. Feelgood because personally I feel that Dr. Feelgood was uh, all around their best album and I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, probably their most successful commercially. Uh, a lot of hits on that album, a lot of singles. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, of course Motley Crue, uh, just to give you a little bit of backstory in case you don't already know, um, you know it's it's they're really one of those bands that have been around for a long time and uh, a lot of memorable songs even before the Dr. Feelgood album. Uh, band, this is one of those few bands that I think that people generally know, uh, pretty much everybody in the band, Vince Neil, Tommy Lee, Nikki Six, Mick Mars, um, you know, very few bands I think you have that name recognition for all the guys and uh, some a little bit more notorious than others. Uh, and some for things uh, that are not quite music related, uh, good and bad. So uh, here we go. And I have my little cheat sheet here just to help me out, keep me on track. So uh, overall this album I think has just this really, um, I don't know, it's that LA rock, that uh, Sunset Strip, that sleazy, dirty, uh, but bluesy kind of feel to it. I, I really think there's a bluesy flavor to it, and I really like that about this album. It wasn't just, you know, nothing wrong with girls, 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 or that kind of stuff, but there's, uh, is it possible to say that there's a maturity uh, just slightly to some of Motley Crue's work here? Um, yeah, sure, a little bit of maturity. Um, so straight out of the box, uh, we're talking about Dr. Feelgood, um, big hit single, and uh, it's, you know, it's kind of a story of uh, the rise and fall of a, a drug lord. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of a departure from some of their girls and bikes and, and that kind of stuff type of song, because there's actually a little bit of a story to it. But uh, you know what, it's, it's a great song. Um, you know, it's thundering and it's, it's loud and uh, it's, it's real, uh, real-ish. Uh, and I really like that. So. Um, Dr. Feelgood, really great way to start off that album. Uh, and then, you know, it just kind of keeps rolling from there. Um, Slice of Your Pie, that has kind of a bluesy, sleazy uh, riff to it. And I really like that. In fact, um, you know, we're going to go through a couple of the songs here that I have on the list from the album. But truth be told, there are very few songs on this album that I don't like. Um, and I'd say I'll even listen to them if I'm just listening to the album the whole way through because they're not terrible songs. They're just, uh, there are two songs on here that I don't really care for and I'll talk about those uh, as we go here. Uh, and then of course, uh, my personal favorite, Kickstart My Heart. There's just something about that song. It's, you know, uh, it's, it's fast and it's loud and it's um, the songs about literally dying and coming back to life uh, as one of the infamous Motley Crue stories goes. Um, Kickstart My Heart, though, great. Uh, you know, of course, it has the motorcycle type of vibe to it, which is, you know, right, right up their alley. Um, love it. My favorite song on the album. Um, same Old Situation, again, just another good song, another single. Uh, they, they really, uh, I, I don't know what it was about this album and the songwriting, uh, but they really, I think, just put together a, a very cohesive uh, effort here. Um, you know, the songs, it, I'm not saying that they sounded the same, but there's very much a consistency the whole way through here with, uh, with the sound of this album, and it's a great sound. Um, 
Moving on to Sticky Sweet. Again, a lesser known song, but it's a, got a great riff to it. It's just, it's catchy and it's, it's loud and it's rocking. And, um, you know, it's everything you want in, in continuing this flow from the Dr. Feelgood album here. Uh, and then, of course, you get a little bit of cheekiness. Um, Motley Crue is known for that. Uh, don't go away mad, just go away. Uh, it's kind of funny. It's a funny song. Uh, it's about the days of your youth, and we all know about falling in love uh, when we're young, um, and then we know it's not going to work out. We probably know it's not going to work out, um, but, you know, we kind of write it for what it's worth while it's there. Uh, so, girl, don't go away mad, just go away. Great song. Uh, all right. So, for me, those are the highlights of the album. Um, the, the low lights, and again, these are not terrible songs. These, these, so I'll say that most of the album is up here for me, pretty high, and then the other ones, uh, the two that I'm gonna talk about are kinda right here. So, uh, medium level songs, not terrible songs. Uh, the first one is She Goes Down. Uh, I don't know, I just find it, even for Motley Crue, even for Motley Crue, I find this song just a little bit on the childish side, a little bit juvenile. Um, Yes, we like to make songs about sex, uh, great. But uh, I don't know, uh, this song just, it wasn't their best effort, I don't think. Um, so we'll leave it at that. And then finally, and uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a ballad guy. I don't even like the word ballad. I think I've talked about that before. Uh, but they finish up this album with Time for a Change. And um, I, I don't know, it's, uh, Compared to their other ballad type of songs, it's weak. Uh, I'm probably thinking that they were talking about trying to change their lifestyle here, uh, maybe a personal song, which is why I hate uh, saying bad things about songs that I think were probably written from a personal place. Uh, but I just, uh, I don't know. It just feels a little disconnected from the rest of the album. It doesn't feel like it has the same kind of... Uh, I don't know, it, it just feels a little flat to me. And that's, that's all the best way that I can say it. Uh, again, not a bad song, uh, but you know, probably could have been left off the album. Uh, a B-side maybe. It just didn't grab me. And uh, if it grabbed you, great. But for me, it just didn't really work out that way. Um, so the copy of the CD that I have is actually the uh, 20th anniversary edition. And this copy of the CD includes five additional tracks on it. Uh, and it's five uh, live versions of pretty much the singles on the album. Dr. Feelgood, Kickstart My Heart, um, Without You, Same Old Situation, and Don't Go Away Mad. We didn't really talk about Without You. Oh, sorry, I skipped that in the earlier section. But again, that's another one of the songs I like. That's one that's considered a ballad. Um, when I was uh, a young guy listening to this stuff on the radio, that's definitely one of the things I remember. It's uh, the the guitar in it. You know the you know the the guitar sound, the little riff when you hear it. Uh, it's kind of dreamy sounding, um, but again, another great song and another big hit for them. So uh, this album was really full uh, of some recognizable uh, singles, some hits, and uh, you know, good for them. Solid effort all the way around. As I said before. Uh, there really isn't a bad song on the album. There are just a few that I don't like as well as the rest. So, um, with that being said, I think that wraps up our Motley Crue Dr. Feelgood. I'm going to do a couple more of these kind of videos just for the albums I really like. I don't think I'm going to pick anything that, um, that I know that I don't like. But again, if you have suggestions, I'm happy to take a listen and talk about those as well. A couple of the things we having, uh, have coming up on the channel, very excited about. Uh, I'm going to do a Fast Five video, I think I'm going to call it. Uh, I'm going to take a look back at the first five albums of uh, certain bands, which means that they're probably bands that have been around for a while. The first one I'm going to do is a first uh, Fast Five of Metallica, starting with Kill 'Em All, all the way up through the self-titled Black album. Um, so look for that coming up pretty shortly. And uh, I think I might do another one of these type of quick My Favorite Album type of reviews coming up as well. Um, a little bit down the road, we have another Metalhead unboxing. And I do have a very exciting, I think, uh, first time 
type of mystery unboxing for you. Anybody who likes Funko, um, I know that's pretty big, and I have a uh, mystery box. It's a mystery to you. I know what I ordered. I have some rock and roll Funkos to unbox. That will be coming up just as soon as they arrive at my door. Um, so pretty exciting stuff coming up. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this review. And uh, please let me know. Subscribe, like it, talk back to me. Uh, and I will see you next time. Thanks.